Welcome wonderfully created, welcome to Created I Am. Today we're going to be making a waistcoat, so get your sewing machine ready and bring over your waistcoat. Trace it around carefully, making sure to mark all the curves. You also want to mark the darts and any features that you want to keep. Now for the dart, you want to add an inch to the dart line and mark the middle point. You're going to use this to create the triangle effect for the darts. Measure one side of the dart and make sure it's the same on the other side. Extend the shorter side and then use that to mark your final pattern. Don't worry if you don't have a French curve, you can just freehand it. For the back, you're going to do the same thing. For some waistcoats, the shoulder is slightly longer so you're going to pull it up carefully and trace it. As you can see I'm freehanding it this time. My only mistake was being a bit too quick with using the final marker. I ended up adding the inch to the dart towards the side seam. I didn't really like that so instead I put it towards the middle. I then extended the middle part at the bottom and pretending that that diagonal was gone. Retrace the middle and then put the diagonal back in. What you want to do is also make sure points like where you want to put the band is marked on. It's, there's a slight dot showing that. Measure the two parts of the darts and make sure they're the same length. I then traced the lengths of the bands at the back of the waistcoat onto my pattern piece, making sure that I'm marking on the allowance that would be needed for finishing and folding the band. Once done, measure the side seam and make sure it's the same for the front and the back pattern, extending the shorter line if needed. Also check that the shoulders are the same length mark on your seam allowance, I used one centimeter all the way around. Once you've cut out your pattern piece, we're going to focus on the front. What I did is imagine what this would look like once it's on. There's going to be a slight overlap and the four marks show where the buttons will originally be, but we're making an easier buttonhole system. So I'm going to be using loops. I then guessed where my loops would be and marked on where my buttons would have to be. I missed half a centimeter and then marked on 1.5 centimeters lines to represent where the buttons would go. What I had to realise though was that I was working on the right hand side of the waistcoat. The left hand side of the waistcoat is where the buttons would be. The right hand side of the waistcoat is where the loops would be. So to create the left hand side of the waistcoat, I simply turn the pattern around. I then used a pin to transfer all the key points such as the darts and the pocket. Once done, it was time to draft what the loops would look like. Simply trace what you think yours might look like as a guideline because you're going to use this to measure out the material you need. When I measured it, I got 8cm in total including some seam allowance. Once that was done, it was time to cut out my pieces. Once you cut out the pieces, you need to also make sure that you transfer the darts. In total, you're going to need two left front pieces, two right front pieces, two left back pieces and two right back pieces. When you're cutting out the front and the back bodice, you need to make sure that you're clearly marking out two left and two right. One is the main piece of fabric, one is the lining. You also need two pieces for the pockets, two pieces for the bands, four pieces for the loops and some buttons. I use the same material for the main and for the lining. The benefit of that is that if the lining does peek through, it's hard to notice. Now, to make the loops, what we do is we fold in the two corners into the middle and then fold that. Then you take it to the sewing machine and sew one straight stitch all the way down to keep it firm. You could do a two, but because it's so thin, I find it a lot easier to do this. Now it's time to prep the bands. Fold them in half and use a straight stitch to sew down the edge. Then move that edge seam into the middle. You're then going to sew across one end to finish it off. For one of the bands, I sewed it on a slight slant. Turn and press the tube to finish it off. Now it's time to make the main bodice pieces. We're going to start off by creating the lining. Take the two back pieces and place them right side together and then sew one straight stitch down the middle. Then what you're going to do is right sides together you're going to place the front two pieces and you're going to sew them by the shoulders alone. Then you can sew down all the darts using the middle line to line everything up. You're going to do this for the front two pieces which are my red pieces and for the back pieces which is my grey. And that's your lining done. We're then going to focus on the main material. You're going to put the two back pieces together, right sides together just like you did before, sewing down the middle seam but avoiding the slant. Then you're going to use this to mark on where the band should be. Make sure the bands are placed in the middle of your darts. 
Now originally I had the wrong side facing up. As you can see, I then turned it around so the right side was facing up. And then I placed the bands where they needed to go. I then folded the dart over where the band was so that the darts were sandwiching the bands. So the dart, just like you would if the band wasn't there, but you might want to reverse stitch where you feel the band is to give it a bit of strength before you finish it. I decided to clip the bands so that they don't disturb me later whilst I'm sewing. You're then going to make sure your material is right sides facing up and then put the front two pieces right sides facing down so right sides together and sew them at the shoulder seam just like you did before. And then you're going to sew the front piece darts together. Next we want to prep the pocket. All I did was fold it over to make a neat rectangle and then sew the pieces down at the back. Once I did that, I placed it on the front where I liked it and then sewed that down. Let's look at the loops. I crossed mine over but you don't have to do that. Because I crossed mine over, I could sew them in place together. If you didn't flip yours over but you made yours look like our pattern, then you might not be able to do that. You might just have to jump straight to positioning. Take your time doing this. After positioning my bands, I realised that I didn't want four but instead I wanted three. You can decide whether to push it in and make it a bit smaller or pull it out and make it a bit loose. But you have to remember later you're going to use a 1cm seam allowance so consider that. The project is coming along nicely now. You're going to take your main piece and you're going to lay it down right sides facing up. You're then going to take a lining and match it putting the right sides facing down, so right sides together. We're then going to clip and sew around the armhole and the middle part. When you're sewing, it's useful to try to sew from a seam, so from the shoulder seam for the arm and for the middle. You do not want to sew the bottom and the side seam. I wanted to show you this where I'm sewing down the part where the loops are. I'm taking my time and making sure that my seam is wider than the seam I used when I was sewing down the loops. Once you're done, trim off any excess and nip the curves so that they lay nicely once you turn it over. To turn it over, you're going to place your hand through the back piece and grab the edges of the front pieces, then pull them through. You want to gently pull the front pieces materials through. You don't want to just try to yank it through the back because the material will scrunch up and it won't go through. It's a good idea to take it to the ironing board and iron it down. Lay it down with the right weight facing up. At the side seam you should have four pieces of material. You're going to take the two middle pieces of material and pin them together because we're going to sew them together. Those two pieces are the lining. You're going to continue by pulling over the main pieces and creating a straight line as if it just goes on. Again, when you take it to the sewing machine, try and start from the seam going either way. Now it's time to close off the bottom of the main piece. Trim off any excess making sure they match and then take one piece and flip it over. Realign them at the bottom. You can use the center triangle to help you do this. When you pin the pieces, make sure that you've allocated the section that you're going to leave on sewn so that you can flip it around later. I'm sewing the front two parts first and then sewing the back. When I'm sewing the back, I'm going to start at the triangle and then sew either side. When you're sewing, you might notice that the lining has a bit of excessive material. That's okay, just sew down the excess material. I was on a phone call, so I was a bit distracted. I closed off everything. So my trusted seam ripper came to the rescue, so I seam ripped about two to three inches of an opening. Then I tried to poke out the corners, and I was struggling because I remembered that I hadn't yet snipped at the excesses at the corners, so make sure you do that. Grab a needle and a matching thread and sew down the entrance that you created. If you take your time, you'll be okay. The main idea is to attach the lining and the main piece, trying to clip onto the material that you're not going to see. Buttons. You're going to use the loops to mark on where the button should be and you're not going to do what I did and pour the buttons on the table. My only criteria was to make sure that it didn't show in the lining. Now we don't all have the metal piece lying around needed to finish the back band but you can use a piece of material. I grabbed the fourth piece I didn't use for the front and I cut it in half. I then applied fabric glue to the edges. You don't need to use fabric glue, you can just sew it in place. If you're using glue, make sure to leave it for a bit to get tacky. Use a longer piece to mark where the fold may be and place the first band there. 
then place the second band slightly further down. Clip it in place and wait for it to dry. And that's it, your waistcoat is done. Seeing real clear through a fine glass, magnify you like a spyglass. Number one, be my desire, like the world and burn like a fire. I ain't trying to be at the forefront. And no, I ain't trying to be the face of the movement. I don't want to take your place. I don't want to take your glory. Let my life be like glass so other people can see you. Let my heart be the path that lets your light come flooding. I really hope you like that project. Do like and subscribe. And remember, you are wonderfully created.